Okay, everyone, we're back here after some technical difficulties. We have to start this all over again. Luckily, though, we didn't get that far. So, one of the things that we're going to show you right here and right now is how to put on shades. And a lot of people, one guy I, I remember talking to was telling me that he spent years developing techniques on painting um, different kind of weathered looks. And all of a sudden guys come out with these products that you can easily just buy in. They're basically a special paint and it basically does the whole work that he did taking years to learn and master and uh, it takes minutes versus hours or sometimes depending on the paint days. Um, so we've got the horse all painted up here. I'm quite happy with how this guy's turned out here. And we have the samurai. We're going to be painting them here. So we've got a couple of citadel shades to show you so here you've got your tiger panther tank whatever it may be in 35th scale or whatever and you have the figures now you go and look online how do I paint up the figures and you find tutorials on how to paint the eyes you find tutorials on how to paint eyebrows hair all this stuff you just want the figure to look a little bit better than just a plain flesh tone so I'm going to show you guys here some really cool products that you really should have in your modeling arsenal. Whether you agree with Citadel and Games Workshop or not, you should own these paints. They are very, very cool. So the first one that we're going to show you is, they're all called shades, so they're a wash. I don't know why they don't call them wash. Yeah. Be unique. Yeah, <laughs> be unique. Like their names. Uh... Yeah, the names are the worst part. This is Reichland Flesh Shade, okay? That's not Reich as in Third Reich. That's R-E-I-K. And this is for flesh tones, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the first thing we need is your base coat of a flesh tone. I'm using Flat Flesh from Tamiya. And the figure here so here's my samurai so what's the first thing we do uh, grab the smallest brush you have because he's 70 seconds scale right mm -hmm. okay and ready uh, to paint yep give it a good shake the paints don't necessarily need a shaking it's more in line to get it into the uh, tray thing mm, up in the top here mm. the little catch okay so, I've got it on my brush, now what do I do? Just paint. Just paint it on? Mm -hmm. You're sure? Mm -hmm. Just gotta be careful where you paint. So, what's this wash gonna do? It will highlight and darken the features of the face. So, like the eyebrows, the mouth, the mm -hmm. nose? Yep. And one thing I've learned with doing these, with playing around with Citadel washes, is if you put too much on you can add a bit more water onto it and you can kind of thin them down from your model or you can just quickly uh, damp out your brush and pick it back up yep they're pretty easy to work with guys you just play around with them for a little bit and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that's it right mm -hmm. all done and you can't see it on these guys but we'll have pictures of them but he put them on these archers that he made and they look pretty good they've got um, you played this a little heavy would you say yeah so they've got kind of a a war torn they've been out in the battlefield for a little while kind of look on them it's pretty cool so the next thing I used is a, f a nice glossy orange actually before we get to the orange let's talk about the brown what's the next color we're gonna use uh, what are we going to paint? Uh, the brown. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is a brown wash. This is Agrax, Agrax Earthshade. And this is a dark brown? Mm, I believe so. More of a light brown. Okay. Look these up on the internet if you're needing a specific color. They have a lot of different colors that you can choose from with this. So this is one of the things I was learning about when I was learning how to paint horses is having just one form of brown on top but then to put a wash like this on it 
and kind of lightly in a way, not quite splotching it in there. This is, I can already see it working here. I'm actually really liking the result. Getting all those muscles out. Yep. And that's looking really good right now. Um, the thing to remember, again, is this stuff is not like an enamel wash. This stuff is like an overall wash. It's going to cover the entire model. It's going to change your overall color that you had there to begin with. And so get ready for that when you start painting them. But that looks pretty good. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You can see all the muscles in there. So I'm going to put that to the side for a moment here. And let's talk about the black that you have. This one is Nuln, N-U-L-N, oil. Again, why these guys can't just say black shade is or black wash is beyond me. They used to say wash, but they don't anymore, right? Back in the day, I remember they, before they changed it. I so, thought these were recently new, though. Yeah, these are new. Oh. So what I'm going to do is I've got all this gloss red on here. And I liked it because it's a more brilliant, vibrant red than just their flat red. So I'm going to use this flat black wash. And it's going to get into all these areas here. And just spread it around. over all the decorations there. So... A little bit on the back. There! I uh, get that little bit you got there. Oh, this is what? Now you just spread it on oh, the I horse. See Okay, there we go. You want to get this paint before it... If you make an error like that, you want to get it before it dries because it'll just dry up. And sometimes you have these big splotches and they'll, part of it will dry up and then you wipe away the paint and you'll have this little circle in the black area. Mm. So it needs to dry more flat it than depends. in thick layers, Yeah. typically. Okay. And the last one that we have that you've used is... Bile Tan Green. Now, you bought this for orc painting, your orcs, mm. right? And it looks incredible on them. So as just a sneak peek, can we see the stand there, the whole thing? Yep. So what green did you use first? Uh, I used a Citadel Lair Green called Moot Green, which is a light green. Mm -hmm. And then you put the green wash on top of that. Mm. And that looks really fantastic. That's pretty good just to go by that. So I'm going. We're going to cut this video short here. This is how to use these washes, guys. They are fantastic products. I really can't get over that. I I don't like the pots. I don't really like their paints as much because they're very hard to thin down for airbrushing. But these little washes or shades uh, are really incredible they are so much fun to use and they take they take your model to a whole new level by just adding a little bit of detail um, the next step is the second to final step here which is applying grass which we'll get to later and after I've shaded up all these figures here so we're gonna go do that right now mm -hmm. anything else I forgot uh, nothing I can think of no. okay good so this will probably be the final step before I get to the, you know, uh, final overall review of the video. Um, this is something I've wanted for a long time, and it's harder to find over here for some reason than the style that I want it. This is called static grass, and it's very, very fine strands of plasticky hair. Now, when I did stuff like the um, Zvezda Hawker Hurricane and DC-3, I use stuff called flock grass, and it's basically sponge, and they, you know, it's kind of ground up in a uh, nice green color, and I think it looks pretty good. But I like this static grass a lot more. 
And it took me a while to find this stuff. I don't really know why it was such a such a challenge. But uh, yeah, they only have it in one color here. Citadel here makes it in exactly the way I want it, where it's got I think about two shades of green. It's got a brown and a yellow. So it has more variety of, of grass. A bit expensive. This was a $10 bucket of grass. So that's kind of the only drawback. But uh, I'm probably actually going to buy another one. So I'm going to show you guys again how to do grass and stuff. And this is Elmer's Clear Glue. It is white glue. It is a nice acrylic. And I like it a lot still. And you're going to need a paintbrush for this. And I have them here on a clamp. I use that Moot Green. And I've just painted this. I've, I haven't painted the back yet. I'm going to get to that after this dries. So let's just paint all this on. Now, I, I did this to one figure already. And what my brother told me is don't put it on around the edges because it doesn't quite, it makes it so they don't fit into the bases. And I'm just realizing I forgot to put down the green wash or shade on here. Oh well, it'll look good. Let me just clean off the brush here. So I've got this painted on, quite happy with this. And let's just plunk it down nice and gently. Kick off as much of the excess. Now, here's something kind of crazy you might not have thought of with static grass is to if it, you can't really do this with a train layout which is you know kind of what this stuff is meant for but um, we can here because it's on a little base like this is let it dry upside down okay because the acrylic is it's a because it's acrylic glue it's going to take a little while for this stuff to dry and what the hairs are going to do is they're all just going to fall down and it's going to make it look like the grass is standing up it's going to be kind of cool so here it is it's just this little ball and it looks terrific i really again i really love the look of this stuff i think it's i think it looks like nice grass and yeah it's it's a bit expensive this box was ten dollars and it's not a lot in it this is actually you know i used it on one tiny little base and this is the second time I've used it, so this is about how much you get in the in the whole thing. So I hope you've enjoyed that. That's the static grass. So next, you know, you're going to see a nice little slideshow and final over thoughts and review of the product. I was misinformed. There is going to be one more part. I forgot about the decals and the flags. So. I thought I would do this really quick just to see what they're like so you can see what to expect. I'm um, only going to use Microset and Microsol because um, previous uses with these decals, they're pretty good. I haven't had any problems with them. So they're ready to go. I've got the flags painted up here. Nice just flat uh, Tamiya yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of microset on these and like I said they shouldn't need a lot because they're pretty small okay that works and the flags are kind of bumpy but you know what? It actually has conformed very nicely on it. So I'm going to use a bit of a bit extra. Whoops. That was too much extra. It lifted. 
there. So, that looks beautiful. I'm really thrilled about that. So, yeah, I'll show you guys that in the pictures. You'll be able to see that a lot better there. So, I'm going to go and finish deckling the rest of these because, yeah, they don't take a lot. They're, they seem to be very, very easy and nice to use. So, you shouldn't have any problems with them. So, this time, the next video you see will be the you know slideshow unless something goes horribly wrong. finished mounted samurai archers and um, what can I say I had a lot of fun building these little guys these are incredibly fun little kits to get to put together and Zvezda has done a really nice job of manufacturing these um, just these little you know they're the little figures for for a game but they're incredibly well done and they're very very nice and fun to paint and put together so I, I had an absolute blast with these guys and uh, I'm quite happy with how the they turned they've turned out here in the end not a lot of problems with these kits they're fairly simple fairly straightforward fairly easy to put together that, that that's a problem they're a little fussy because they're so tiny and a lot of the parts are pretty small too like getting the um, the arms here into the torso the one that's holding the arrow um, that was a little difficult to do. Uh, even as I put the flags in, I could tell I was kind of breaking the flags. Um, that's kind of, that's kind of one of the only two problems I had with the kit, is the, the pegs that you insert into the model are a bit too big. They're, they're fairly, fairly thick. Um, one of the horses here, I put it in the base to see how it would look, and when I tried to remove it, I, I ended up leaving his uh, hoof in the um, in the base there which was a little sad but uh, you know it was something easy to work around but it was kind of a wake-up call to not test fit all these parts because they're gonna stick and they're not gonna come out because they're just so tiny um, the other thing that was a bit of a problem is each of their left feet has a peg in it again and that fixes into the horse and I cut them off when I when I tried fitting them in the peg they were kind of tilting to the left side a bit and I didn't like that it you know they don't it didn't fit properly so what I did instead is I cut them off and I thought I'll just try gluing them on here and see you know what they look like and they fit very nicely they fit they kind of fit more secure they kind of snap in their own way into place and so they look a lot better now with those uh, pegs being gone. Um, they're just really nice, like I said, to build. Um, one of the things that I did is, you remember I painted the armor uh, semi-gloss black, 
And on this guy, I dry brushed black on his breastplate. And it took far too long. It was becoming much too tedious to do. So what I did instead is use the um, black wash. And what's really cool is when you twist them around, there are these subtle glimpses of uh, the, the semi-gloss coming through. And it looks like weathered armor. It's pretty cool. So I'm actually really happy with how that turned out. And getting to paint horses and, and learning how to paint them properly was a challenge, but it was kind of a fun challenge. And I'm, I'm quite happy with, with how, they, uh, how they look here now. So um, the other thing, too, is I've never built these before. But my brother and I, we were planning on buying the big old starter kit that you, that you have to get in order to play the game. We've got quite a few of these in, in the storage of these, you know, just the single $5 kits. Um, so we're going to be building a lot more of these, and I'd like to do an inbox review when I get whenever I get the uh, starter kit. Um, it's kind of a harder kit to find for some reason. Um, I don't understand quite how it's going on, but my... my um, a hobby store told it to me this way. He said for gaming stores and um, stores that you know sell board games and things like that, um, for them to get the box starter set is easier, but they have a, some of them have a harder time getting in the smaller five dollar kits, uh, and he has an easier time getting in the five dollar kits than he does getting the starter kit. And they told me the you know kind of the exact opposite story. They had an easier time getting in the starter kit and not as easy time getting in the small kits. So I don't know really what's going on there. I don't know who their distributors are and stuff like that. But if you'd like to see more of these, like if this is something people are interested in, in seeing more figures, I'm going to be building more of these, but I wasn't planning on filming them. But if people want to see them being filmed, leave me a comment down below if this is something that you guys would be interested in seeing more of because I'll gladly you know film more of, uh, of these builds because they're quite a bit of fun um, the other thing too is I'm gonna be uploading uh, a bunch of these pictures to the blog that I started a few years ago I've mentioned it a couple times my brother said put them on there he we we're gonna either use that or his tumblr account he wanted to put them on there instead uh, of his, he wanted to put them on on the on the web instead of his Tumblr account, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. So there'll be a link to that down below. And uh, whenever we keep building more of these guys, we'll just keep uploading and updating pictures on there. So uh, you'll be able to see more on there whenever you get a chance. Uh, I gotta thank my brother for helping me with this and and for showing you guys, you know, how to do all these washes and stuff like that. It's a five, you know it can be up to a five dollar little pot of that flesh tone wash and guys that's gonna make all the difference in your models I can see how it's dried on the faces here and it looks really good it's it's such a simple thing guys you're you're gonna be kinda kicking yourself how easy it is just to have kind of just a face it's not super detailed but it's just something there and it and it gives you kind of a a sense of accomplishment instead of just having a flesh tone and it also looks good when you put it on hands and stuff like that because that pools into the recesses and all that sort of stuff. So that's really cool to have like that. Uh, and again, these are just $5 kits. So you're not really doing yourself any harm if you go and buy one for yourself. And they have Samurai, they have World War II, they even have a few modern armor sets. And they have some Galleons. Um, they have a... They have a a uh, game about fighting with galleons. I've never seen it here yet, but it looks pretty darn cool. So go and check them out. It's only five bucks. Buy one, paint them up. You'll probably have a lot of fun when you're doing that. Um, I think that's all there is to say about these guys. It's just it's just been a lot of fun. Um, the grass did gr dry nice and straight, and it looks pretty cool, all up upright and everything. So I'm happy with these guys. I really, really am. They were a lot of fun. And again, if you want to see more, if this is something you, people will be interested in, I'm no expert on figure painting and stuff like that. It's something I'm kind of trying to learn more of lately. Because um, it is quite a bit of fun, but it's a lot of work. These took me about a week to paint. 
but it's well worth it because it was a lot of fun. Anyways, guys, I'm going to uh, cut the video here now. And thank you guys all for watching. You can leave your comments down below if you have any. I love to read them. This is Rubs with Cloud 9. If you haven't learned anything, at least I've taught you what not to do. See you guys later.